Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's shoot is an exciting one. As always, we've got some really cool looks, but I've also got some brand new backdrops I'm gonna try, and also some new equipment. If you're new here, my name is Ian Hippolyte. I make videos all about fashion photography, including behind the scenes content and lighting breakdowns. If that sounds like your thing, make sure you stick around and subscribe to the channel. But let's get into the shoot. So while our model for the day, Brit, was in hair and makeup, I started working on the first lighting look. I wanted something that was soft, but still has shadow in places and had dimension to it. I played around with a few ideas and ended up with a pretty simple three light setup. My key light is a large white umbrella with diffusion, which is set up quite high and slightly overhead. To balance this out, I've added some fill, which is just a bare bulb bounced into the white wall behind me which is gonna provide some even light across the whole scene. And to add some detail and some catch lights into the eyes, I'm just using this gridded soft box, which is gonna add a bit more light to the face. All the lights I'm using today are Profoto strobes. I love that the light is soft, but as it's coming from the top left, it falls off and becomes a bit more shadowy towards the bottom of the image, which keeps the drama there. The pink styling also really complements this teal backdrop. Speaking of backdrops, I knew I wanted to add some more texture into the shoot because I'm tired of shooting on plain coloramas or white infinity coves. So I decided to get these backdrop panels on loan. They're from a company called Set Surfaces based here in London and they make really cool sustainable backdrops. The backdrop that I have here is called a set skin and it's basically a printed fabric which is wrapped onto a panel which is supported by a really simple support stand at the back. There was lots of different textures and colors to choose from but I went for this plaster texture in a deep rich teal which adds a bit of an edge to these images. For the next look, we kept the lighting pretty much the same, but I decided to move the model closer to the backdrop so she could interact with the set and lean on the wall and things like that. As always, I'm tethering into Capture One throughout the shoot, but the screen I'm actually using to view the photos is brand new and it's from BenQ. It's the SW272U and it's a 27 inch 4K monitor. So it's a really high quality, but what really makes it stand out is the colors. You can really tell this monitor was designed for photographers first and foremost. Out of the box, it has incredible color accuracy and output with 99% Adobe RGB color gamma and 100% sRGB as well. I personally find it really important as a photographer that my colors are interpreted properly digitally, but also in print. BenQ actually have a software called Paper Color Sync, which allows you to preview your images as they would come out in print on the monitor before you print them out, which saves you a lot of time and avoids all the trial and error of printing and having to reprint things and getting it wrong and doing it again. The design of the monitor itself actually really helps with this. It's designed with a fine coated panel, which simulates paper texture and also has an anti-glare coating to avoid unwanted reflections. You can see the difference here between my laptop screen and the monitor and how it completely reduces that glare from the flashlight. This has helped me so much in the studio because there's a mix of lights going on in here. We've got light from the strobes, we've got natural light coming in. I've also added the hood, which comes included, and this helps block out the ambient light even more because it's lined with a black fabric material. I find it makes the images pop even more and really just allows my eyes to focus into the screen while I'm shooting and retouching. Connectivity is really simple too, with a bunch of different options. I just use a single USB-C cable, which plugs straight into my laptop. It also charges it at 90 watts, and we're good to go. It even has an SD card slot built right into the bottom of the display, which comes in handy as well. The monitor also turns 90 degrees, which is great for if you're doing social content. So if you're editing stuff for TikToks, Reels, YouTube Shorts. And one of my favorite parts is this little hockey puck which it comes with, which allows you to quickly change your color mode using the three um, shortcuts here. And you can also adjust your brightness of the monitor or change the volume of your computer using this little dial here as well. If you
if you're looking to upgrade your monitor setup, I definitely recommend checking it out. I've put a link in the description. So we're on to the third look now, and while the team was doing the hair, makeup, and styling, I was changing the backdrop color simply by removing the fabric and replacing it with another one. These panels are super lightweight, so I got it done in no time at all. We went with a pale gray concrete effect, and we also had a matching vinyl floor. For lighting, I moved the key light from above, more so onto the side, and I also added a fourth light. The fourth light is a Profoto D1 with a reflector, which is just being pointed up towards the white ceiling. This is just more fill. It's casting an even light onto the backdrop and onto the whole scene from above. As I've been doing more shoots, I've really began to appreciate fill a lot more in terms of just balancing the scene and getting rid of any unwanted shadows. I think I've definitely underlooked it at times and now I'm starting to appreciate it more and starting to use it a bit more. Even if it's just a little bit, I think it can make a big difference. We had some really fun styling on the shoot. This matching lip boot and glove combo was crazy but cool at the same time. And if you're wondering what camera I'm shooting with, it's my tried and true Canon R5 with the 24 to 70 f2.8 lens. I'm thinking of doing an updated what's in my camera bag video, so let me know if that's something you'd want to see in the comments. <laughs> This fourth and final outfit was definitely my favorite. Styling wise, it's giving baddest student in the class, punk vibes. I just think it's so cool with all the buckles and all the pins and all the details. This sculpted hair was incredible and we also used yellow in the makeup to pick up on the yellow skirt and the yellow pins. I moved the backdrop panels to create a V-shaped set and placed the model in between the walls. Obviously it's very Irving Penn vibes. I moved the key light, which is that large umbrella, more overhead to create a top-down lighting, which is gonna make it feel more like an actual room. And I left all the other lights as they were before. I love these close-ups of her playing with the tie. We wanted to sort of add some really cool energy and add some dimension into these shots. And I think we got some pretty good ones. I'm gonna be real with you, this shoot almost didn't happen. There was definitely some drama in the morning and we ended up starting two hours later than we expected to. Sometimes it can be really difficult to pull a team together and make sure that everyone's schedule is coordinated. But fortunately, I was able to pull together a team of some amazing creatives to collaborate with me on this. So thank you to everyone who was involved. Let me know which was your favorite look in the comments and if you want to check out the BenQ monitor or any of my other equipment I put links in the description. If you enjoyed the video make sure you give it a like and to see more of my work make sure you follow me on Instagram at Ian Hippo. For more photography content make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers which is wild. Thank you so much to everyone for the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!